Now the WordPress dashboard is a pretty much unloved part of the WordPress ecosystem. It hasn't really been changed much in a long, long time. So today we're gonna to take a look at a plugin that promises to change all of that. So if you're looking for something that helps you change the look and also add extra functionality, then maybe WP Adminify is something worth taking a look at. Now we're gonna start off with the free version of the plugin. So this is your normal WordPress dashboard. So let's go ahead and activate WP Adminify. And there we go, that's WP Adminify. Thank you very much for watching, I'm just kidding. So as you can see, this is a bit of an assault on the senses. There's a ton of options inside you that are displayed inside the normal home section of your dashboard. We've got extra functionality, including custom panels if you want to add those in. We've got real-time server details, WooCommerce details, you know, all those kinds of things going on inside you. Now, you may or may not like the look of this. For me personally, this is just a little bit too much. So a little bit of refinement, I think, is something that we'd probably want to take a look at. And obviously you can still use your options in the top section for your screen options, and you can just enable and disable things that you do and don't want inside you. So you can tidy this portion of things up. You also notice that we've got the Adminify logo in the top left-hand corner. You can change that. You can change your branding and so on. If we come over to the top right-hand corner, you can see we can switch between light mode and dark mode. Now for me personally, dark mode is just a little bit nicer still requires a little bit of tweaking, I think, because if you take a look at, for example, these real-time server details, that kind of looks a little bit awful. You can't really see what's going on in these little block sections. Let's just refresh the page just to make sure that everything is loaded the way it should do, because I am screen recording at the same time as this, so we may find that that has some inherent issues with it. But that does look like the way it's meant to look. So for me, it still requires a little bit of tweaking. Now, if we all go into the WP Adminify section, you can see there's an absolute boatload of options inside you, and I'm not gonna cover all of these. This is something that I wanna show you, and then it's up to you if you wanna try it out. As always, only test these kinds of things on test servers. Don't put this on a live site, just to make sure that everything is the way that you like it before you take a look at doing something like that. Let's go into the initial setup section. So we're going to WP Adminify. You can see inside here, we can enable and disable lots of different options. So for example, the folders, which is now an extra feature, like I mentioned right at the top of this video, it enhances what you can do. And if we go into, for example, the media section, we'll open up our library in a new tab. If we take a look inside there, you can see we now have the ability to create a folder structure and organize our work. Very similar to something like uh, Happy Files, you can see we can rename, we can delete, we can create new folders, we can come in and we can sort these in various different ways. So, you know, again, it's one of those things that's one less plugin you need to use if you use something like WP Adminify as part of your site setup. So pretty cool, quite useful. We've also got things like your menu editor, so you can fine tune exactly what's gonna be seen in the left-hand section for your menu. Great if you're handing this off to a client. Again, one more plugin you can kind of remove if you were using something to customize the look and feel of your setup. So there's lots of options inside your, your page speed insights. So if you wanna connect this up to Google and check it out to sort of see what your page speeds are like, you can do that inside your, including things like all your server setups, those kinds of things. You can test all those things out inside your. Whether you'd wanna use this, that's entirely up to you. And for example, if we just hop back over to the normal dashboard home section, just so we can see. Like I say, there's your real-time server details. And if we come down, you can see we've also got a lot of information down the bottom, like your memory usage, your IP address, your PHP version, your WordPress versions, those kinds of things. I would say something like this would be good for development when you're setting things up. And I think you probably then want to turn most of this off because once you kind of know those settings, you're not going to go back and want to use them again and again and again. So, you know, varying mileage depending upon the feature or features that you actually enable and disable. So have a look through here again. Post Duplicator, another plugin you don't need because it's part of this. You can disable your comments directly inside you. You can add in post order, again, another plugin you don't need to use. You've got activity logs. You can use header and footer scripts. So if you wanted to do away with something like uh, code snippets, for example, you just wanted something really simple to put code into the header or the footer, you know, maybe tracking codes, those kinds of things, then you've got that option inside you as well. You've even got admin columns, so you can customize the admin columns. So if we come over into the section on the left-hand side for admin columns, inside here you can see we can now customize this. So you could consider this to be something like admin columns pro light. 
you know, again, whether you'd find use for this. Personally, I would. And as you can see, there's a lot of things locked behind the pro tier on this, which we're not looking at at the moment. So you can see we can easily come in and add new columns inside here. Oh, we can't add a column for some reason. Okay, we can't add a new column. So we can just basically go ahead and just open these up and make changes to them. So pretty limited what you can do in the free version, which is a bit of a shame, but it does seem to be a recurring theme inside the free version of the plugin. Some of these things I'll get onto in a moment because I'm not overly overall with the way they look and feel. Your dashboard widget, uh, you can see we can come in here, we can create custom dashboard widgets, and again we hop back over. This little section here, where I've got Wibble, that's a custom dashboard widget, and you can use Elementor to create custom widgets if you want to inside here, which again is another plugin you can kind of do away with, where we've looked at in previous tutorials and things, how to create these custom uh, sort of dashboard widgets. So again, one less plugin to deal with. Custom CSS and JS, if you want to use that, you can use it inside here. And it's nice to see you've got these docs and video tutorials and Facebook group and so on. But maybe don't stick those on the top of every single section. Maybe just have something that allows you to just choose a drop down from somewhere else, you know, maybe in the top where you can choose the different kinds of light and dark modes, those kinds of things. You know, just I think a couple of little things that will clean things up a little bit. So for example, if you take a look at where we've got the custom sidebar generator, you can see that the text is flush against this slightly highlighted area. Just little things that I think need to be tidied up to make this totally pro. If we switch back over to the light mode, you can see it doesn't really have an effect there because we can't see the background. But when you switch over to dark mode, there are these kind of slightly weird quirks going on. Server info, if you want to check out the information about the server that you're currently running, you can just take a look at that inside here. And you can, you can see all the different information, including the plugins you've got installed that are active and so on. You've got a notification bar, page speed insights, tons and tons of different things. As you can see, we can come in and we can customize all this as well inside the customizer. Let's just jump back out of that. Sorry I'm hopping around a little bit. There's so many things to take into consideration. I just don't want this to be an hour long video. Okay, so. Login customizer. This again is something that's nice to see inside you. So if you want to create a custom login section, again, that's one more plugin to do away with. And as you can see, this is the current one I've got I'm playing about with, heavily branded by Adminify, which is okay for the free version. I would like to see that just be a little bit smaller. It's kind of a little bit too much in your face but it is free, so we have to expect to have things like that inside you. But as you can see, we can come into templates and there's a range of different templates we can choose from. But again, it's upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro, everywhere inside there, except for maybe the first, yeah, the first four, should we say, which is no real difference to login press. I mean, login press, which is obviously what this is kind of modeled upon, is very much the same. You've got about four or five different predefined templates. And for most users that don't want to spend money on this kind of thing, that's more than enough for most use cases. And you can still customize it enough to make it less WordPressy and a little bit more on brand if that's what you want. If we hop out of this, you can see we can adjust the logo inside here. We can display it or hide it. We can choose between various different types, text, image, those kinds of things. So we can enable and disable that. So there's a lot of options inside here for customizing, including custom CSS and JavaScript. But a lot of these things are locked behind that paywall. So for example, if we come into various different things, you can see we've got upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro, upgrade to pro. Now, I don't mind that these features are locked away behind the pro paywall. That's perfectly fine. You know, they've given a lot away for free. What I don't really like though is this notification on every single feature. Just group these features into one or just put something small there that says pro only or something. This whole sort of, as you can see, six, seven, eight, nine, nine messages on this settings panel, just one settings panel. So maybe just streamline and tidy that up a little bit just to make it not quite so obtrusive. We know you want us to upgrade to pro and that is perfectly fine, but you can go a little bit too far with the nagging for it. And, you know, it's evident on various different parts of the site. Again, you can see inside here, we can't do color, blur, horizontal or vertical for the, the button, and you can't do the height and width, which again, like I say, all perfectly fine, but just cut the nag screens back a little bit. So that's how you can customize that aspect, which again, like I say, is a very, very useful feature and one less plugin to use.
Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of the different settings inside here. We will take a quick look at the menu editor though, because I think that is something that can be quite useful. As you can see, this allows us to go ahead and reorder things. We can come in and we can change the icon for this. We can rename it, you know, so if you wanted to create something that was a little less WordPress, a little bit more on brand for a client, a customer, those kind of things, then you have a lot of options inside here to do just that. And it's nice that you can reorder these kinds of things. You might want to put your pages and your posts together. Well, we can now put the pages and posts together and then we can just, well, save that. And you can see there's our posts and pages next to each other, which to me makes more sense in WordPress anyway. You know, why do you separate that by the media? I don't know. But you can see we can easily come in. So we might say, well, comments is disabled, so we don't need that inside here. So you can come in and you can say hidden for, and you can then choose who it's hidden for based upon user roles and based upon individual users. You can do sub menus inside there, lots of options. So I like the look of all this. I like the options we have inside here. I just don't really like that overly naggy nag screen. But as you can see, we can very quickly and easily completely change the look and feel of the WordPress dashboard by using the Adminify free plugin. So that's basically my first look at the Adminify plugin. This is the free version, but if you'd like me to cover the pro version and do a comparison between the free and the pro versions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll grab a license for that and take it for a spin. As always, I would love to get your feedback on this. Would you consider using this? Have you tried it already? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.